Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's Jason and Andy here at Infinity <laughs> Flux Comics from Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're here to do our weekly day before new comic day review video. So we try to keep it relatively spoiler free. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll tell you if there's a major first appearance. We like to tell you sort of what each comic is relatively about mm -hmm. and what sort of reader would like right. that comic. That's sort of the goal of the show that we do every week. Uh, just finished reading a ton of them, so they're just swimming around. I was around about to in our say, heads. like, I need to like, start getting <laughs> some of these out to make room so, so the, the other stuff can it's settle. It's a big week. It is it a very, is a big, very week. big week. So, what you see here is just a small selection of what we're going to go over. So many more than this. Um, so, to keep the show hopefully under two hours, let's begin. <laughs> let's begin with a book that I think a lot of people are really excited about Superman, Son of Kal El. Nice to see people excited about a Superman book. Yeah, I, I, I think don't a know. lot has to do with who's writing it. I think, yeah, so this is written by Tom Taylor, and mm -hmm. I think a, a lot of people are just really intrigued by just the subject of John Jonathan Kent stepping up and taking over the, the mantle of Superman. And that, that's going to happen for sure, according yeah. to sources. So this is really cool. This is a great introduction issue, even if you haven't read anything with Jonathan Kent before. Um, this retells his birth, which is a very weird thing, the original one, because it was actually in the, the series Convergence. Convergence, yeah. And good luck, like... You know, they've tried to be like, well, yeah, and then this is the Superman from before and everything. It's like, okay, they retell his origin um, in a kind of this universe version of it, which is very similar, which is really cool because, uh, I mean, not to spoil it, because this does happen in the Convergence version too, but he was born in the presence of Batman standing guard outside of the door to the Fortress of Solitude, and Wonder Woman actually delivered him. Yep. And it's such a cool thing, um, and it's even mentioned, I think uh, if it was Batman or Wonder Woman that mentions it, like, he was born surrounded by, like, four of the, like, greatest people to ever live, heroes, which was yeah. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, um, Batman and Lois Lane, mm -hmm. which is a, a really big deal. And so this is definitely setting us up for this kid is going to be something like he's got this kind of burden on his shoulders even before he's born about he is like kind of the perfect um superhero where he comes from and everything but this gets into uh then later on where you really see what kind of superman he is and I will say, we don't still know where Clark Kent right, Superman is. Right, what happens to him. They're still right. rolling that out. Yeah, that's. I feel like they're, they're still dragging along that mystery. And I like it because you're, there's, there's still this element of, like, how did he take up this mantle? You know, what was that moment that he had to become the Superman? Um, but this is more setting him up to see what kind of Superman he's going to be and what are the challenges that come with that. And surprise, the challenges are very similar to the ones that his father had, which mm -hmm. is I want to do good. Sometimes doing good breaks some rules. Right. And there's a lot of red tape involved. And the other really cool part about this issue is uh, he does have a conversation with Damian Wayne, his best friend, and uh, Damian Wayne is currently on the Lazarus Island, where he's fighting this arena. I, and I he, like this part. I yeah, he this. doesn't he doesn't stop. He's still <laughs> part of that thing while having a conversation with Jonathan Kent, which is a really really fun conversation. Um, but there's there's a lot that goes down between that in that conversation about Damian kind of giving his two cents on what is Jonathan's responsibility and what is his job going to be going forward. Um, so I'm really excited about this series. It definitely, it doesn't even, I don't want to say it doesn't leave off on a cliffhanger, but it really is a nice encapsulated single star issue. You can tell by the next time on um, caption that we're going to be getting into a bigger story, but this is definitely for people who maybe haven't read a Superman book in a while aren't as familiar with this character. It's a great introduction. I think it's a great jumping on point for people who want to try out 
maybe someone in the super family. So really, really good issue one. Tom Taylor knocking it out. John Timms doing the art. Um, he worked on Harley Quinn a, a while back. A great artist. This is, I feel like, going to be a really popular book going forward. Yeah, I mean, I read everything Tom Taylor, and I read the preview of this back when it was available to mm -hmm. us retailers, and I, I was very happy with it, too. I mean, a lot of people argue, it's like, if you have Superman powers, how can a writer come up with good challenges for you? And right off the bat, Tom Taylor shows in this issue, A, okay, this is a new Superman, so he has big shoes to fill. Yeah. He's coming in in the shadow of his father. And B, he also shows, you have to read it, here are the problems. Here is why it is difficult wielding such power. Yeah, yeah. It's You've got all this power, but maybe you can't always use yeah. 100% of it. Yep. Um, so we have the A cover, which is a beautiful homage to a classic Superman. Yeah. Then we have the mm. Enhyuk Lee variant, back when they were a little bit younger. Then we have this beautiful uh, Jen Bartel 1 in 25 variant, kind of one of those like head sketch variants that we are selling for 25 Okay, I'm going to start things out with Batman Secret Files Huntress. This is the first one shot they're doing under the label of Batman Secret Files. The, the next one is going to be Clown Hunter. I just got to read an advanced copy of that, which was very cool. So uh, the first thing I'll say about this Huntress one shot is if you haven't been reading Detective Comics, you're going to want to read Detective Comics. Mm -hmm. um, this is, and also this week Detective Comics 1040 drops, you want to read this first. This is the one to read first. It'll make the experience much better and make a lot more sense. <laughs> in fact, they even do a nod to this in Detective 1040. There's an asterisk nod that's like, as seen in Huntress. Um, okay, so what is it about? So in Detective Comics, the big bad right now is a character named Vile. And he has a way to infect people through their eyes and it turns them sort of insane. They start killing everybody. In this ish issue, it begins with Huntra. She is just sort of staggered back home. Uh, her dog's waiting for her, and she looks pretty rough. She just got out of the hospital and has gotten over the vile syndrome. She's the first person that, I mean, the series has shown that she got it and somehow um, was able to be cured. So how was she cured? You'll have to read the issue. Mm. We, we can't show you all that. <laughs> but that's just where it starts. That's the premise. Um, the other part of the premise is... Now that she had this virus, she has a new power. What is this new power, and how does it link her with Vile's upcoming victims? Um, you know, the most I'll say is it gives her uh, sort of clues as to who is going to be the next. Mm. And so we get to follow her around as she tries to, to stop things. It does end with sort of a, uh, a cliffhanger moment about a certain person who just got infected. <laughs> You'll have to read to, to see that as well. Um, to me, so these one shots, have you read the Clown Hunter one, which, you know, that's not out for several weeks. Yeah. The Clown Hunter one's a lot about him. This one, it feels like Tamaki, she put Huntress into Detective Comics, which I, I've liked her being there. I like Huntress as a character a lot. But it felt like she had more story to tell than Detective could contain. I mean, mm -hmm. comics are only 24 pages, and often, you know, a writer just has more to tell. Yeah. So instead of this being like a Huntress origin or a huntress just doing her own thing for a minute this feels like that extra story she had for detectives spilled out into <laughs> this and now you get to see what huntress was doing during the vile storyline which is pretty important stuff mm -hmm. honestly um so a very good read if you've been reading detective i just don't want anyone grabbing it going oh this is a cool one shot and then going my head's spinning i yeah. don't know what's going on um of course you could pick it up for the covers mm -hmm. i'd buy tons of things just for the covers alone. Uh, comics aren't just a good read, they are legitimate art pieces. Mm -hmm. So um, that's sort of my generally spoiler-free review of uh, Secret Files Huntress. Um, and so we got two variants to show off. We have the Federici variant. It's very dark. This one looks better in person <laughs> without the layers of, of glass and plastic you're seeing it through right now. And then there is the 1 in 25 Rodriguez variant for $30. They sent this to us in Mylar, so this one's really shimmery. <laughs> yeah, those Secret Files issues are interesting because they don't 
they don't connect. No, they're they're definitely one shots to highlight certain characters. Yeah, uh, I guess it's kind of here become more familiar with some of these characters. Yeah, yep. the Clown Hunter one is all about um, sort of why he will kill, whereas mm -hmm. Batman won't. And by the end of it, it changes something kind of major with him mm -hmm. and another character. Um, so because you know he he needs someone, he, he needs a teacher. <laughs> yeah. That's just your your early spoiler free yeah, <laughs> nod yeah, to yeah, the next we'll, we'll issue. We'll get to that in a few weeks. So next up is a book that I don't know if anyone had a good idea what this book was going to be about. So this is Amazing Fantasy number one. The covers the, alone that made me yeah, want to read this. These are just so beautiful. Everything in this, other than lettering, but the uh, the colors and the art and the writing are all by, done by uh, Kari Andrews. And you may have heard the name Amazing Fantasy before. That, that's kind of an older <laughs> thing. But this one definitely uh, leans heavy into that. So I will try not to spoil too much of this, but you really have to know about the setup. Because if you see on the cover, I mean, you've got what well, looks to be Captain yeah. America flying on a... Like a manacore or something? Yeah, yeah, it does. I don't think it has the, the snake tail, yeah, but that's true. just like a winged lion. Mm -hmm. uh, you see kind of classic um, Conan-esque stuff going on here. Well, it begins with Captain America in World War II with kind of his his platoon of, of people. Like, he's in a little boat, but there's a lot of ships and they are crossing German waters. So, very interesting start. The art style in this book does change several times, but it's still all done by the same artist. But this first one uh, is very kind of classic, darker Captain America, um, very World War II Captain America feeling. But something happens. We'll say that, uh, you know, this was not a successful trip from one side of the water to the other. And Steve Rogers climbs up on shore of a island. But when he climbs up on shore, he has a full, like, majestic beard, long hair, his suit's torn. And, you know, to him, he was just like, oh, I was just out there. Where is everybody? Where's all the debris? Right. And now he's kind of in this tropical island. Definitely not uh, Germany. <laughs> so this kind of sets us up. And right when we're, like, getting into this... It switches to Black Widow, and not the normal Black Widow. This is young Black Widow still training in the Red Room, and there is a a mission that she has to go on that we'll say does not go super well. There's kind of a theme to these. There's something, and it doesn't end well. Third we see a teenage Spider-Man. This is bright, quippy, swinging through New York, Spider-Man talking about his, his uh, gotta help Aunt May because, you know, they don't have any money, and uh, if only Uncle Ben were here. Very, like, 60s Spider-Man, but once again, something happens, and we'll say there is... Uh, a coming together of these characters in a very odd way. And the mystery is somewhat revealed by a character that you do not uh, expect to see and uh, in not a very expected way. So it's very hard to describe this book because I feel like this whole first part is has to be read to really experience it because it's nutty. I mean, it is. Mm -hmm. All the stuff you see on the cover is pretty much in the book. This isn't just kind of your fantasy novel cover. Um, I'm very interested to see what happens in this, especially with kind of the revelation at the end uh, that may not line up with what we know about the Marvel Universe, which a lot of things can, you know, shift. It could be alternate dimensions, any kind of thing like that, but uh, it's pretty heavy stuff at the end, so... Really, really cool issue. This is only going to be five issues long. So it's interesting. You've said so much, but I feel like, like I get a sense of what you're, because I haven't read this. I get a sense of what it is, but I still feel like I don't know anything about exactly. this. Exactly. Yeah, and that's why it's such a hard book to talk about because uh -huh. I really liked it. Like, I 
going into it, I was like, oh, okay, it's going to be this little off shoot mini series or whatever. I read it, I was like, I really, I want to see more of this. This is, what he set up in this is so interesting. Uh, and it's cool that it's one guy, but three different art styles with cut different coloring styles. Um, you would believe it's done by three different people, but it's not. It's all one person. So, And if you see some of the covers for the next issues, they're all like this really cool classic fantasy. So here is another uh, one of the variants, also by Kari Andrews. That's more of what the Captain America part looks like. So it's very like classic World War II Captain America. And then we have the 1 in 25 Holy variant for $35. You see Cap, Black Widow, and Spider-Man on there up against a dragon. And I'll say maybe this exact scene doesn't happen, but this is very much in line with what could happen in this series. It's cool. Superheroes versus fantasy. That's what I'm imagining. I'll, I'll see when I get to read it later. Yeah, I, I definitely suggest people read it because... It's it's just really cool and also very like art forward. Um, very everything is super interesting to look at. So highly well, recommended. I'm about to talk about a cat book too. We did not plan this. We just <laughs> we do our own orders here, and you know that's my next book. So uh, I read United States of Captain America number two. I really like the number one. I particularly like the A story. I would say the same thing about this. So in this book, Captain America and Falcon. They're on a road trip to get back Captain America's stolen shield. An imposter who looks like Captain America but is much faster, much more speedy, has stolen his shield. Um, and as they're trying to figure this out, this happened in last issue, they uh, come across other people who refer to themselves as Captain America's, but they do it on a, like a local level. They're called the Captain's Network. They sort of keep the dream alive in their local areas where Captain America, you know, he's busy putting Thanos for the gauntlet. <laughs> well, these people do smaller things sort of in his honor. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to be him. It's just sort of in his honor, keep that spirit throughout the country. Um, well, someone is trying to kill them. So that's the two storylines that are going on. Somebody stole Cap Shield who looks like him and is an imposter. And someone else is trying to kill these people from the Captain's Network. Uh, last time we met, his name, I think Aaron Fisher, was a Captain America yeah. last issue. So this issue, they meet a new Captain America named Nichelle Wright. She is the Captain America of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Hmm. And they show you on a little uh, map where she is <laughs> and everything. It, it's very cool. Uh, I like this issue a lot. I thought the first one was great. Uh, Cap waxing philosophical on uh, I, issues about... America was really good and well done uh, and not that inflammatory. I don't know how they pulled that off. <laughs> this issue is different. This issue, it's definitely now you're part of the adventure. Um, so Cap and Falcon both have new shields in this hmm. that they've never used before. Um, the most I'll say is Cap's came from Tony Stark. So you have to imagine what that could be. You have to read it to find mm -hmm. out. And um, Falcon's was done by Misty Knight. Oh, cool. So two new shields, never seen before, both get used in this. Pretty interesting. I think Caps in particular I found very interesting, the way that it works. Um, so as far as other things that happen in this issue, there's crooked cops, uh, Tommy guns, there's a <laughs> sort of a semi-jailbreak. Uh, by the end of the issue, you finally, you do learn the identity of the villains. Like the two villains I brought up, the imposter Cap and the sort of assassin, you do learn their identities, and I'm very excited about who they are. One in particular, I think everyone's been waiting for this character to show back up for a lot of reasons. Yeah, Jason I, I, I told me spoiler to him who it was, and that it suddenly I don't know it kind of broadens the world of like oh whoa really okay like what now it feels like there could be lasting yeah. things that come from. All over the place. And different books also, too. we know that more and more, all of this MCU, Disney Plus, and comics are sort of coming together. So when a character sort of shows up again in a comic, it's like, oh, is this character going to be used in one of the others? And vice versa. Just like, you know, they, they name drop Kang on Loki. 
And now, oh, here's a Kang comic that, yeah. you know, we didn't really know much about. So, You know, I, I, it's, it's all kind of a behind-the-curtain conversation, but I didn't even consider the character that you told me about never even crossed my mind for, and the other characters that may be part of that group uh, being in the MCU, and now I'm like, that could be really, really cool. I, I read rumors about it. Actually. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 I don't know why that never crossed my mind, So but really yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, so... Hard to talk about this Yeah, when y'all read it, you'll understand this conversation, but it's really cool. So the backup story to this follows uh, Nichelle Wright, the new Captain America character they introduced, you get to see just what it's like being her. In fact, it, it starts right at the end of the A story. You just mm. kind of continue with her and see what her life is like a little bit. It's okay. The A story is really what I liked, I have to say. I mean, that's my own opinion. I like these new caps. They're neat. But this A story they have going on is great. The witty banner between Cap and Falcon is just perfect. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, you just don't think of Captain America and humor together this yeah. way but they're doing it right it, it, you know I, I don't know it's a good book so let me uh show with this variant here is the bustos design variant and there we have michelle wright captain america of harrisburg why pennsylvania she only has one pant leg not at all style ah, style, style baby yeah, ask somebody to ask her, and she goes, "Style, baby, get some." <laughs> and I just I made that up. She does not do that. If you have to ask, it's not for you. Yeah. <laughs> so only one variant for that one. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So next up is a book I was very excited to read, uh, especially since I got to skim through an early kind of review copy of, and had me very intrigued. So this one is the last book you'll ever read. This is by one of my favorite horror writers, Cullen Bunn. I'm interested to hear about and this. And the art is by Layla, still don't know how to say her name, Lays, L-E-I-Z, who is the artist on Mom, Mother of Madness. Hmm. So all of a sudden, she is now on up front, scene. in the scene. Uh, and this is, I mean, very different than that other book. So this follows um, an author named Olivia Cade. And um, we, we pick it up um, a few pages in at a book signing. So we know she's an author, uh, but something happens at the book signing that's crazy. And you come to find out that she wrote this book called uh, The Seder. And this book has people really upset, so much so that they are attacking other people. Uh, it has created like riots. People are attacking libraries and bookstores if they, like, have this book. Um, and the author kind of understands. She's like, yeah, I, I wrote this book, and I, I kind of understand why this is going on. Mm -hmm. So there's this kind of a, a mystery to what is the book actually about? Yeah, like, the they, <laughs> they hint at it a little bit that because they even you kind of read paragraphs from it. But it's something about, like, revealing society's like true nature um and people read it apparently and are like yep yep i'm gonna now be like that so it's very disturbing in that way but also i like i like books about books mm. because i i just think that's a really cool like the power of a book and the written word and all of that this is heavy about that um but there could be more behind uh, Olivia Cade and the book than, uh, let's say, is on the, the natural plane of the world. There could be something a little bit darker behind it. Um, but this first issue read really fast, uh, mostly because there wasn't a ton of dialogue, but a lot of, like, here's the setup of the, of the story about this book, and the author and kind of different people interacting with her. There's a, a very interesting point where all this craziness is going on. People are trying to get to her and she announces she's going on a book tour. And so she, there's a new head of security who's like, that's, why would you do that? That's crazy. People are trying to come after you. And she's like, I know. 
but she asked the security guy, he's like, have you read my book? And he's like, no, I, I haven't yet. And she's like, good. I don't need a security guy who's read my book. Mm. So it's, she knows the power of it. Um, but the rest of the book is just kind of showing you people who read the book and then what happens. And it's very disturbing, very dark, um, very horror focused book, but th that kind of like just really unsettling horror. But I think a lot of people are really going to like this because Bun is such a good writer, such a good um, idea person about the worlds he sets up and everything that I think uh, a lot of people are really going to like this. The yeah, horror is, you know, often better when you don't know and you have to imagine. So I, don't, I, yeah. I just think when I read this the whole time, I'm going to be trying to imagine <laughs> what this book is saying. Yeah. So here's the A cover by the uh, series writer. Here is the B cover by Hickman. You see her reading the, the book on the cover. It's got the little like prancing satyr on it. Um, there is actually polybagged variants as well of these. Um, there was a, a, I think it was cover C and D. Yeah. Um, we are already sold out of them. We yeah. had more people request them after we placed our orders that they are completely gone. We've placed an order to get some more in. Uh, I will say this book is adult in the like violence area. The polybag variants are adult going the other direction. So <laughs> if you're wondering huh. what's behind the polybag, it's that. But a uh, really good book, and I'm, I'm very excited to see where it goes and how this, uh, you know, exploring more about this weird, weird book. All right, so from Milestone Comics, we have the next number one, Icon and Rocket number one which is actually out today at stores that sell DC on Tuesdays. So I, I didn't know a ton about Icon and Rocket, to tell you the truth. Um, it's really cool to read some characters that have been around, and I just they were on my radar, yeah. but I just didn't get to them. And so this starts out with Icon's origin, which I had no idea is reminiscent of the movie Alien. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I can't tell you all the details because you got to read it yourself. But I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm like, whoever came up with this origin watched Alien and Aliens, and that's a little bit of Icon's hmm. origin. So I had no idea. If any of you have, know about the character, maybe you already knew this. I didn't. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, so he is an alien. I mean, people know that. It's not yeah. spoiler to say that. He crashes on Earth in Georgia. Not too far from us. We're in Chattanooga, <laughs> Tennessee. George is like, what, 30 minutes away? Yeah, yeah. Um, in 1843. So that's where... That is a little bit further from us. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Te Temporal-wise. <laughs> and um, so that's where he's from. He, so he's been around for a long time. And you get to see why he looks how he looks, who raised him, all that. So then it goes to not quite present day. It goes to pretty much Rocket's origin. Who is she? So this is closer to present day, but it's not present day yet, because this whole thing is kind of told from Rocket's perspective about, here's how I met mm -hmm. Icon. And Rocket is running with just sort of the bad kids. She's running with this like gang of thieves who don't treat her right or respect her, really. So even though she's a fairly intelligent individual, she's just falling in with the wrong people. Mm. Well, due to their criminal ways, they cross paths with Icon, who doesn't call himself that at this moment. <laughs> and um, he kind of tries to convince her to change. He, th he sees something in her that's not in her friends. And she, when she sees he has powers, and he's been hiding these powers, you know, this dude has all these... He, Icon's about as powerful as Superman. He is yeah. very, very powerful. So when she finds this out, she's like, how are you not helping the world? So they get into this very interesting morality conversation about if you have this power, shouldn't you be helping people? And of course, he has rebuttals, you'll have to read, that have things to do with, yeah, but if you help people, then they expect that help, and will they ever change? And mm -hmm. So that's what the first issue is about. It's how they met, and how they see things differently, and how, uh, you know, I guess, and on Rocket's end, can she change enough 
to get away from her bad friends to be able to, I guess, have Icon see her perspective and maybe, maybe both their lives will be better or maybe the world will be better. So that's literally the first issue in a nutshell as far as it's an origin issue. Mm -hmm. Many, many, many details left out, but that's the sort of overall of it. So I thought it was a good uh, origin issue. I, mm -hmm. I thought it was a good origin issue. And so we got some variants. This is the Doug Braithwaite variant. And then we have, this is the Banks variant. That's the one with the uh, the abs that go yeah. all the way to your knees. We had, we had quite a few people <laughs> pre-order that one. Yeah. And lastly, there is this uh, 1 in 25 Koyana variant. Really nice. That we are selling for $25 to our customers. Well, it is time for your Infinite Frontier update of the week. You started the uh, the updates of the week <laughs> before with uh, uh, King and Black, and now I feel like I've got to keep that tradition going. So this is number three of Infinite Frontier, and I hope people are reading this uh, because I think this is a really cool book and told in a, a way that um, we don't see a lot of like event books and everything. Um, Heroes Reborn did it a little bit, but where it's kind of got a couple of stories in it, they're still around the, the A story, but you're exploring different aspects. So this one um, continues the story of uh, Alan Scott, Green Lantern, and his daughter, or I mean his son, Obsidian, trying to find Jade, his daughter, who uh, the JSA headquarters has ex exploded in a green fire uh, and she is green, so that kind of gives people the impression that ah, she may be behind it. Right. Uh, so they do something that I think more often that superheroes should do. They just go uh, super villain by super villain. They're like, <laughs> do you know what happened? Did you do it? And there's a great page of them just going through all of these JSA villains, just being like, did you? And uh, they finally reach... Somebody who uh, maybe doesn't know, but brings up a very interesting point. Um, next, it switches over to, let's see, what's the next one? Roy Harper, which uh, I think is kind of the, the sleeper story of this that is going to be a big deal going forward, where Roy Harper, I uh, guess you could say now, even though it questions it on the cover, we know that he is a Black Lantern. Yeah. We've and, done that for a while. This cover has been like... Yeah. And, and the question they ask in uh, <laughs> Director Bones' pages of DC, it's like, but you've shown us You've shown us who the Black Lantern yeah. is. But uh, we saw in previous issue that when he uh, kind of tried to figure out his power, he saw a image of his daughter, which has not been around for a very, very long time. Uh, she died in this big event that happened in Star City. And so he's trying to figure that out, and some really cool stuff happens with that. And then we also have the story of President Superman and Thomas Wayne uh, investigating this spaceship that, or not even space, like dimensional ship, that had been breaking down and like scattering pieces through different uh, multiverses. And they have a very interesting conversation with Magog, a uh, return of a classic JSA character, Magog, um, that uh, I, know, I feel like all these stories are like, and then some, he tells them something, but it is really cool um, that slowly through this issue, we are seeing the return of key characters from, uh, from a certain team that, uh, that Alan Scott was a, a member of. And by the end of it, you will have quite a few more of those characters hmm. making an appearance that really sets up like they've got to announce a, a, book. a book by the end of this because the gang's almost all here. So it continues to be really good. I love that this is focusing on some of the minor characters that we haven't seen in a while. Um, and Joshua Williamson is doing a, a great job with this. So we have the Brian Hitch variant cover for it as well with Flash and Psycho Pirate on there. So I definitely, I think this one 
is going to be a really good read altogether as well because each issue feels like right when you're getting a little bit more of a character story, it moves on to the next character. And when you can read it all together, I think that's going to be really, really good. Quite possibly one of the biggest books of the week. Something is Killing the Children 18. Every book. I, uh, every I, week when it comes out. It's I just love sitting down, cracking these open. These are always such a great read. And the art in this one is particularly fantastic. Uh, the art in this one, it's a very frantic style that really colored how I felt when I read it, hmm. which I like a lot. So we are still in the Erica Slaughter origin arc of how she becomes a member of the House of Slaughter. So she's, you know, her young self. Mm -hmm. And in this issue, they take her to the farm for an, her induction ceremony into the House of Slaughter, or into the Order of St. George, mm -hmm. I should say, if she can survive it. And as we've seen in previous issues, there are characters in the background who do not believe she can. <laughs> Almost nobody does. Um, so you know it's going to be wild. Like, even though, you know, we know somehow she has to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not like she's dead in the future. It's, it just sounds like it's going to be something big. They're really building it up. Um, so we get to hear some ceremonial questions. And we get to see the beginning of the test. But it seems like next issue is going to be where it gets really crazy. Uh, that's not to say there's not anything major in this issue. There's a lot of major things in this issue, but the biggest one, the one, the reason, you know, if you're just picking them up here and there, or you want to know why to pick up multiples, there is a first appearance of a character named Gary Slaughter, who seems <laughs> to be a pretty important character. Hmm. So there you have it. That's my spoiler light review. <laughs> Gary Slaughter, first appearance, pretty big deal. So, And uh, there is no yes. B cover. There is just... This 1 in 25 Craig variant that we are selling for $50. It's a really nice yes, cover. It'll be interesting, too, when this story arc's over to see what they do. Are they going to go back to like the main timeline? Is there some... I, you know... I think they will, personally. I think that all they're doing is, is they're foreshadowing characters that she can meet now and we don't have to learn who they were. Yeah. So I think all the people she meets that they don't kill off in this arc, it's like, well, now roll them out. And we do know that there is the House of Slaughter yeah. series. Uh, we've got the free comic book day book coming mm -hmm. first and then the like full ongoing series yep. later this they're, year. They're turning it into a universe. Is yeah. What they're doing. You know, I've been saying for a while that something's killing the children is sort of the new walking dead title. Yeah. And it, it's coming more and more true. Yeah. Especially when you start introducing more key characters yeah. that could be main characters in the other series. Uh, absolutely. So yeah. I think that's really cool. Next up, I've got a star Wars kind of a triple feature for you. <laughs> um, to start off with, we have uh, Star Wars High Republic number seven. Um, so if you... the This story arc has been going on for a couple of issues now, but the key thing with this is, and people may not even passing by realize it, but on the cover, those crossed lightsabers, a green lightsaber and a red lightsaber. High Republic, there has not been any... Sith. They, they believe that the Sith and Dark Jedi are completely gone. Um, maybe that is not the case because this issue is the first appearance of, uh, let's see, make sure, Darth Krall. K-R-A-L-L. -L. Um, there's been, I believe, a, like a store exclusive variant cover that's had him on it, so it's not really like a super spoiler that he's in it. But this is a first appearance of a, a character that you'll have to read it to see if you think they're going to be big or if maybe the other first appearance in it, which is a new character named Orla Jarini, is going to be bigger. Because I have a feeling that she may be a bigger character going forward. Um, that she also has kind of a tie to the Jedi, but uh, when she's asked what... You know, where are you stationed or what order are you with? She says, I'm not part of any of them. She's mm. part of something else. So, really cool. Higher public issue. Uh, definitely want to uh, check this one out because, I mean, 
two pretty big first appearances. Yeah, is this the beginning of the new arc, or is mm-hmm. this the second issue of the I new think arc? it's the second okay. issue, um, second or third. Uh, so we do have a few variants for this. We have the John Tyler Christopher action figure variant, which is cool because this is the first action figure variant with a High Republic character on it. There's there's so many characters in this I really want to see in this style. We also have the 1 in 25 height variant that we are selling for $45. Secondly, I want to mention that uh, Star Wars number 15 comes out this week, the next part in uh, War of the Bounty Hunters. It's interesting what they're doing with these, just like uh, some of the previous ones that weren't the main War of the Bounty Hunter series, like Darth Vader. These are set a little bit before what's going on in the main, like, five issues of War of the Bounty Hunters, where you're seeing how certain characters get to the auction that's going on for Han. Um, This continues that. And it has uh, a really cool variant I had to show off. This is the Lucasfilm anniversary issue and it looks just like normal Ewoks on there but no this is a homage to the Ewoks cartoon because you've got the little the little pink Ewok down there I forget her name from the animated series so just like they did the droids one this is the Ewoks one and this one has a 1 in 25 uh, Renaud variant really cool kind of Rogue Squadron where you're selling for 25. Uh, There's also the Common Coley headshot variant with Leia. But lastly, I wanted to get to this one because this is one that uh, I wasn't even really planning on going over, but since I read all the Star Wars books, I was like, (laughs) I want to look through this one. Um, This is Star Wars Adventures number seven. Not High Republic Adventures or anything. This is the Star Wars Adventures. And what's interesting about this one is it is, and people who I, I dug and dug to, because I was like, this can't be true. This the, the this is a first appearance in here. It seems like it is uh, the first comic appearance of uh, the Crimson Corsair, also known as Sidon Ethano, who was in The Force Awakens. Um, People may not know that name, but they'll probably recognize the character. He was really cool. He was the kind of the pirate that Finn was going to leave with um, from Maz Kanata's castle. And he is a big fan favorite character because just his design. He's kind of like a new Boa Fett style thing. He's got a first mate named Quiggold, um, but he's had his own like separate short story that was published. Um, They kind of put him in different places. He's had figures come out and everything. And I was like, surely he's been in a comic before. The only thing I I couldn't go back and reference the uh, Force Awakens issues because I don't have them with me. Um, I imagine that's probably considered a cameo because he's probably only in like two or three panels in that. Um, The other one I found was there was a Star Wars Adventures um, like freebie issue that came out before Star Wars Adventures ever started and it had like one panel where he was in like a distant thing but I would also say that's a cameo but this one he actually speaks Hmm. and the other really cool thing about this is it is the first appearance of his crew this is what he looks like if people recognize him with the red and the cool helmet and everything that's the B cover Um, this is the first appearance of his crew as well and what we learned in one of the short stories is one of his crew members is a clone from the Clone Wars. And this is set like probably 30, 30 40 years after the Clone yeah. Wars, who was uh, frozen in like a cryo sleep and woken up. And he's actually from the Clone Wars animated series. Hmm. And this is what happened to him. So people who are big fans of all the clones... Um, I'm not sure if he has been in any of the Clone Wars comics, but this could also be his first appearance along with the rest of the crew. And I just have a feeling that this character is 
big enough that he is going to end up in something because he's a big fan favorite character. He's had figures. He's in like the Lego Star Wars game, everything. He even had his own like downloadable content pack for the Lego Star Wars game. But I want to make people aware that this, I, I feel like, is going to be a uh, a pretty big one for Star Wars fans. This is why I need to watch the show, too, because I didn't know any <laughs> of that. I mean, we're, we're busy reading our own things, doing yeah. our own research. I have no idea. So I could go on forever about, this character's awesome. But So that is the B cover for it, where it actually features him on the cover, which I'm guessing is his first cover appearance. And then, also, it has a 1 in 10... Uh, black and white Franca Villa variant that we are selling for $25. But that is my, hey, maybe you should your know about this, <laughs> my, my triple feature of Star Wars. Your, your episode four through six. <laughs> okay, so I read Batman Reptilian by Garth Ennis. We had a lot of people come through, get that first issue. It was very different read than most Batman books. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. The art style also very different. So something is brutally maiming and killing Batman villains. You know, like major players from his rogues gallery. A few of them died last issue, mm -hmm. this issue. Batman is trying to figure out who it is. So he's literally kind of doing the thing that you were saying where he's just going from villain to villain. Yeah. Smart. But you should always go like in this <laughs> he keeps finding them dead or mostly dead. Oh no. And in his own way that he, if you read first issue of this, you'll know what I mean. Batman is much more cruel and severe in this, you know? So there'll be like a dying villain, and instead of him trying to help him, he will be in a very mean, sarcastic way <laughs> interrogating them as to what killed them. You know, he wants to catch the thing, but he doesn't seem like he's losing any sleep <laughs> over these villains getting killed the way that they are. So it's just a real different, like I've said from the beginning, I almost feel like maybe something's affecting Batman mm -hmm. too. But I don't know. It just, you know, Garth Ennis is writing this. It's his version of Batman. So why can't Batman be that way? Yeah. And so that's what I've been trying to figure out is, is this his version of Batman or something affecting him? One thing in this issue that I really enjoyed, but it leads me to believe that this is just Ennis's different Batman, is he uses the Batmobile much like it's used in the Tim Burton movies where you drive it up to enemies and you use all its devices to <laughs> you, beat everyone. You kind of clear the area. Correct. You don't even have to get out. The Batmobile takes care of everything. I thought that part was really cool in this issue. So, um, otherwise, it is more of Batman just finding these gruesomely maimed and dead villains, trying to figure out who has done it. Um, you know, it's definitely not Killer Croc unless something majorly different has happened to Killer Croc. This does appear it is going to be some new baddie for this mini series um so let's see we have a variant by this is the hamner variant i feel like we talked about this book so much even off the show because we were like what who's the villain in this because it, it leads you to think it's one thing and it's not and why is Batman acting like this? And being like, well, his eyes on one of the covers are like Looks lizard eyes. Yeah. The, it's a very, I, I don't know of a, another um, Batman miniseries of recent that people have talked about so much. The, the because art, of how the art different. stands out too. I yeah, think. yeah. It's a, I like when they, you know, this feels like a separate. Like this is a whole different um, Gotham and a whole different Batman. Yeah, this has that 90s, very gritty <laughs> art to it. Yeah. Everything's very dark, and you can show lots of blood, but, you know, it just looks different. Yeah. <laughs> it just blends in with all the other blood of the city. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so next we have Teen Titans Academy. Let's see. Number five. This one uh, I won't go on too much about because uh, you, you kind of got to be reading the series to fully get it. But this is focused on the Bat Pack, who are these three, um, are they friends, are they siblings? Well, you find out in this issue because this is their origin issue. All right. Which is really cool because we've got a lot of new characters in uh, Teen Titans Academy that kind of just showed up on day one. And you're like, what's their deal? What's their deal? So it looks like we're actually going back and exploring, just like how um, the yearbook talked about, uh, is it Stitch? Um, 
the ragdoll character. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is about the Bat Pack, how they, um, like, why are they called that? What inspires them? Who kind of drafted them into this? You find out all of that. But the reason you're learning this is because they are telling Red X, who kind of demanded they tell him their story wow. from the last issue. And oh, I, I don't want to spoil everything about this because there's not too much to spoil. But I'll say that, uh, that he does take his mask off in this. And I don't... I won't say anything more than that. He takes it off. You may mm-hmm. still not... You may not know, because maybe you don't see it, but somebody else may see his face, and that changes what they think about who this... this. It may soften them up for who this might be. So the mystery deepens about Red X in this. Uh. We are also... There's one character, um, based on like timing of this character leaves and this character arrives, that I'm pretty sure is it is not now, so... You know, the, the list really of suspects is out. going down, and the intrigue about him is going up. And it, I think it gets more and more interesting, so now I'm kind of racking my brain being like, who is who could this possibly be that kind of has this sway over people? So, really, really cool issue of Teen Titans Academy. And we have this really nice um, Philip Tan variant with uh, Brat Girl. On the cover with that red x on there what's the series going to do when red x is finally revealed uh, yeah I, I do not know they'll have a crossover with uh, marvel's x-men <laughs> x-men red x crossover so let's going back to marvel i read black widow number nine is that my variant cover i have that's out? your variant why cover why in the world did i do it's that so it's a, a great variant. variant cover yeah this is a mark brooks variant cover so it might be that we were sold out of cover A, possibly. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. So anyhow, so last issue left, Black Widow and Yelena Belova in sort of dire straits. Bad things were going on. Yelena was not looking so hot. This issue takes off right from there. So it's just a continuation of last issue. Uh, you'll have to read to find out if they come out of that unscathed or not. Um, they were in... At one of Apogee's bases with his men all around. There's so this issue. There's lots of action. Starts with a lot of action. Then later in, there's some really good witty banner that is so good that an outside character even talks about it. <laughs> is even like, wow, you you guys have really witty banner, don't you? <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's a writer's trick or, or what. Yeah, <laughs> a writer just patting himself on the back. But it was a funny scene. Uh, Lucy, of course, the the new character who used to work for Apogee who they've kind of taken under their wing, and she maybe is getting trained to be maybe a new Black Widow, White mm-hmm. Widow type character. She's in this quite a bit. On top of that, there's a scientist who they nabbed from Apogee, and the question is, can this scientist figure out a cure for what Apogee is doing? Because he's giving people powers, but I, I shouldn't really say he. We don't know who Apogee is. It could be a he or she, but they are giving people powers, and the power is once the people use them enough, eventually kill them. Mm. And that's what Lucy has. So she's very worried. She wants to use her powers and help the widows, but you, you're you like a time bomb. You yeah. can die. So this scientist who they grabbed, can they convince him to help them? Can he even do it? The one thing I'll say is it's interesting is this scientist, it turns out, um, he has powers beyond, like he, he wasn't given his powers by Apogee. He, he has some powers we have to read about. So I don't know mm-hmm. if they're going to go into who this guy is or if he's a mutant or what. But that kind of was, that surprised me when I read this. Yeah. It's like, oh, you have some powers. And it's a pretty interesting power. Um, by the end of the issue, Apogee reveals who they are to some degree. So it's not a complete reveal. Some big, big hints are dropped at the end. That had me scurrying, looking things up. I couldn't quite figure it out. I'm not sure, but I think uh, another comic-savvy reader might be able to figure out who Apogee is on the last page. Mm -hmm. So, we have... So, I I already showed the Marx Brooks variants. (laughs) That's that's the only one I was going to show. Oh, you put it next to it. Oh, how did I do that? Okay. 
You can tell I don't it's have Adam my coffee. You can tell I don't have my coffee today. <laughs> so that is that's the A cover. And the other was the Mark Brooks cover. Cool. So sadly it is the finale of Beta Ray Bill. So sad that this is coming to a close because this has been one of my favorite Marvel books uh, in, in forever. One, because Beta Ray Bill is in my top favorite characters of all time, but also it's so nice to see that he got such good treatment in this series. This has been such a solid book, really like digging into the character as he goes on his quest for a new weapon after Thor, like a jerk, broke his hammer. <laughs> um, so we followed Beta Ray Bill and his little crew that he's made, and Scuttlebutt, his, his ship now turned uh, companion, that got turned into uh, like a physical form robot, uh, have finally made it to Hell, the, the Norse land of Hell, to uh, the, the I don't, he's not a god, Surtur, whatever you would consider him. He's, he's kind of one of the, I think he's just like a giant, one of the, the old things that kind of guards until Ragnarok comes. Because Beta Ray Bill is going to steal his sword as his new uh, fancy weapon. And let's just say, it goes down in this. I, I mentioned when I reviewed the previous issue that uh, I felt like it was about to be a big throwdown between the two. Right. And this is it. This is an awesome action-packed issue of Bill versus Surtur for his sword to get his new kind of uh, magical weapon because at the end of the the end of the day his big thing is not just having a weapon but he wants something that can help him transform back into his human form right. um yeah, because he's be stuck in the, the <laughs> yeah horse form. The, ho the horse form um but this is a great conclusion to this story and I was really surprised how well it wrapped up at the end. It kind of had your classic the end thing. It doesn't, it's not like, you know, continue on in the pages of four or anything like that. It's like, no, this is, this is a standalone story about Beta Ray Bill, even though it is in continuity. Um, I do think we're going to see him pop up again, maybe in Thor, because this, you know, they've done a really good job at, at moving his character forward and progressing kind of, um, you know, his relationships with different characters and all of that. But I'm very happy to see that this does have a definitive end. And I think this is going to be a great kind of uh, book, uh, kind of an evergreen book that you can always right. suggest to people because it is not super tied in with an event or anything like that. This is a, will make a great graphic novel because it ends really cool. I will say there is a, Major death, um, depending on you know characters you consider major, but I think it was a pretty big thing that that happened in it, and yeah, great great finale for Battery Bill. We have a one in twenty five Dragota variant that we are selling for twenty five. I hope that Beta Ray Bill does show up in Thor, especially like now with what's going on in Thor, because Thor busted his weapon. So if he gets, <laughs> I haven't read this last issue, but if he gets a new weapon, you know, Thor, he can't control his hammer right now. Yeah. So he shows up with his new weapon like, oh, you're having trouble with the hammer now. Maybe you shouldn't have been such a jerk. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing behind it. That's why he's not worth it anymore is because he was a jerk that one Did, time. That one time, yeah. Okay, so I read Robin number four. I've really enjoyed this series a lot, but I'm just a sucker for tournaments. <laughs> and I mean, a tournament where the winner gets immortality, that's really incredible. So right away on the cover, you're going to notice something. That's Ra's al Ghul in the background. It says, Training Day with Ra's al Ghul. <laughs> and that is what three-fourths of this is about. Um, but it isn't just a simple training scene like you see in kung fu movies that I love. It's... Um, so at the end of last issue, Robin was thrown off a cliff and he was saved at the last minute and he awoke just enough to see that he was with Ra's al Ghul. Now, did Ra's save him or not? That is revealed in this one. It's not as simple as, as you would think. You'll have to read to find out what actually went down and how they ended up together. Um, but why is Ra's al Ghul so close to this tournament? What does he have to do with it? Does he have anything to do with it? Why? 
so nearby. That is revealed through their discussions on this. But as you can guess, and as the cover says, he does do some training with Robin, which is, of course, uh, very reluctant. Ro <laughs> Robin does everything reluctantly. Yeah. He is just so well, headstrong. Because he's better. And... He thinks he's better than everybody. And... Yeah, yeah. So you do learn some things about their, uh, their past, and he even kind of tells Robin, there's a lot more you're going to know when you let yourself know it. Mm -hmm. So that all goes down. In addition, there are some other things that happen in this. Um, the League of Lazarus is up to some shady stuff. You'll see that in this, which, big surprise. <laughs> I mean, League of. If you hear that and it's a Batman title, they're just, they're never doing anything League of good. League really friendly people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, then they're the, they're the worst. <laughs> and the other really, there's two more big things that kind of go on that I can talk about without spoiling. One is the tournament doesn't start until everyone's died one time. By the end of this issue, the tournament's about to start. And the other thing is a bunch of characters show up right at the end for Damien. And it's like, whoa, I didn't expect all, all you here. But there's a bunch of characters show up for him at the end who might be the only people who really in any way can kind of understand him. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of the, the climactic ending that will lead into the next issue. I have no idea where that's, that's going, honestly. I'm really happy to see the tournament like, you know, now the tournament, it's not as nice as it was mm -hmm. now that it has begun. So I'm, I'm very excited to see where this goes. It's been a great read the whole way through, though. Here is the variant by Francis Menopole with Ravager. Another great, striking cover. Yep. The daughter of um, Deathstroke. Deathstroke. And uh, she has a, a pretty interesting scene in this one <laughs> as well. <laughs> Next up is the new book from Mirka Andolfo, which uh, apparently there was something, like the printing was wrong with the A cover. There was a, there was like a, a production error with the A cover, so we only got variants for it. And th this is everyone, so if you're yeah. wondering why your shop doesn't have the A cover, there's, yeah, it was, there was a recall issue where we never, none of us got it. Yeah. Thankfully, it has really, really nice variant covers as well. So... This is fun because this is Mirka Andolfo doing what I feel like she does best, which is this cross of like humor, uh, a little naughty, uh, but secretly a lot kind of behind the scenes going on. Um, my first big introduction to her was with Unnatural. Yeah, Unnatural. Which uh, I talked about this when we were um, doing the like the talking about the orders for this one that. Unnatural started out one way where you thought it was just kind of this um, maybe a coming of age story about this pig girl looking for romance uh, and it turned into cults and like ancient prophecies yeah. and all this stuff. Who can you trust? Your friend's getting murdered. Yeah, it, I mean it, it exploded. Um, I have a strong feeling that this is going to go that way as well. So this starts uh, with this character on the cover here, um, Paprika, who Mirka Andolfo loves her like angels and demon characters. Yep. She did that with Unsacred. Uh, if you see her art, she does that kind of stuff a lot. So this is about Paprika, who is a very successful business person. She's, you know, climbed to the top of the the corporate ladder but it has cost her pretty much everything with uh, her family her love life any kind of social things and she doesn't want it to be that way she would love to have you know uh, someone special in her life and she kind of has her eye on a few on a few people kind of daydreaming oh what if I ended up with that person it's very funny it's very um, over the top, this character is, you can tell there's a lot going on, just kind of frantic. Um, but when it, the issue starts, you actually see her, her upbringing, that maybe she wasn't always like this, wasn't always so, um, driven. Maybe she wanted to be a little bit more, uh, go with the flow, a little bit more exciting. But there is a, something that happens at the end of this issue that, makes me think we're going in a gonna go in a different direction with 
uh, something that's going to put, it feel like, I, I haven't read the next issue, but going to put kind of everything that she had going on, like, come screeching to a halt and take a turn. Mm. Um, really good issue. Really fun. If you know America and Dolfo's stuff, it always, uh, it, it has like a, a little bit of like a manga style to it. Yeah. Um, a little like cartoony exaggerated, but a lot of fun stuff to look at, a lot of fun facial expressions. It's it's really uh I don't know, it's it's very unique to her style. I definitely recommend this. Uh for people who may okay, because we saw this with Unnatural too, people are kinda like, uh it seems like a, a romance thing, whatever. But by the end, I mean, it was a, a pretty big selling book because it, it had a lot more to it. And I think that don't sleep on the number one of this because this could, you know, become another one of those really, really deep books. And also, I mean, it's now it's kind of a proven thing about Mira Gandalfa. She's way bigger than she was when she did that last series. But definitely not for the kids. Very, <laughs> very everything in it. Um, but I recommend it. I, I read it. I, I love Mira Gandolfo's art and her writing. So this is the Art Germ variant. Really nice. Uh, and this is actually, there's two Art Germ variants. And this one is the one with the trade dress on there on the bottom. But there is also a virgin version of the cover without that which is funny because it's like it's not too obtrusive on the other one it but and they, were, they were both open order too both open order yeah i almost thought one would anything. be maybe a sketch or something yeah. but it wasn't um so we have the sketch variant it's nice and pink we have the peach momoko variant really nice then there is a polybagged version that definitely is uh, for, for those uh, 18 and up. But that is also the art on that one. It's done by American Dolfo. And then there is a, a 1 in 25 virgin Momoko variant that we are selling for 25. Now, if you think that's a lot of variants, I'm going to tell you about <laughs> Berserker number four. So, Berserker started out, in the first issue, you get to know the main character a little bit, B. You get to see him go on a mission, and you get to see how he just can't seemingly die, at least easily. And he kills people, and he goes crazy, killing them, and killing them, and killing them. He even accidentally kills people he's with. you got to be careful when you're around him. Later in the first issue, he starts talking with a psychiatrist, and they start talking about his past. From that point on, Berserker has mainly been a story of flashbacks. That really is mm -hmm. how it has been. And I just want to remind everybody who's reading it, because you know, these come out once a month. Yeah. It really has been a story of him revealing his history to this psychiatrist who's already heard it before. So at the end of last issue, his story had kind of came to an end. And this issue begins, and the psychiatrist is like, okay, well, we got your story as much as we've got it for now. That's it. So just when you think that they're at the present, he leaves, and this won't ruin the story for you, but I, I just have to share this with you because it's funny. He leaves, and the psychiatrist puts a tape in, and it was like stuff he told her earlier. She pushes play, and it's another flashback. <laughs> I kid you not. Like, I'm not complaining. This is a cool story. The flashback is very important, but it was, I just, I had to laugh. I was like, oh, you got me. I thought we were going to move with the present. <laughs> it is another flashback. So this issue, once again, it's about what happens when his father has made him this weapon that he is. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like, what, like 70,000 years ago, 60,000 years ago. And his father, realizing, you know, how he could just kill and kill and kill, has set him against every other tribe until they're the biggest, baddest tribe. You know, that's what we saw in the last issue. Well, this issue, it's sort of like, well, when did that end? What happened? You know, what happens when your father is killing off every tribe until, you know, you're the best? Like, what do the other tribes do? Mm -hmm. 
uh, let's just say revenge comes a knocking very hard <laughs> in this issue. This is also the issue where you get the moment when B first learns that he cannot die. And mm. it's pretty neat moment. It's pretty neat to see how powerful is he and how does it all work, you know? Everybody, I think when you think of healing, we all go to Wolverine. Mm -hmm. This is not quite the same. So you'll just have to read it to see how. Lastly, at the end of the issue, you do go to the present. You go back to the present finally. And there is a late night caller at B's residence saying that they have critical information that's been withheld from him that you'll get to read next issue. It's going to be a slip of paper that says, you are Keanu Reeves. I'm like, <laughs> what? Okay, so let's go into the variants. So first off, we have this Ward variant. It is a foil variant, as you can see, or can't see because it's so, so shimmery. It's shiny on top of shiny. Then, uh, to not be outdone, the other foil variant, we have the Grandpa foil variant. Next up, speaking of Mirka and Dolfo, she does adult things in this way, too. <laughs> Here's the 1 in 25 by Mirka and Dolfo that we're selling for $15. Then there is the 1 in 25 Virgin uh, version. <laughs> uh, that, that would be a weird variant. This is the Virgin Grandpa variant. For, we are selling for $15. Then there is the Mirka and Dolphin. And, and Dolphin. And Dolfo. <laughs> 1 in 50 variant. It's Drawn by a dolphin. This, this is the virgin <laughs> variant. If a dolphin drew this, I would pay a lot of money for it. We're selling this for $25. Then, of course, there's the 1 in 50 Ward virgin variant that we are selling for 20 bucks. Then we get to the big ones. Here are the big ones. This is the 1 in 100 and Dolpho sketch variant. We're selling for 55 bucks. We're getting into numbers that most stores do not have these or have very few of these. And lastly, the biggest one, this is the highest incentive they offered, the 1 in 200 Andolfo foil variant for $140 to people who purchase through us. All right. Woo. Back to you, Andy. <laughs> I wonder if there's going to be that many variants for every issue of Berserker. I'd say so because, I mean, yeah. it's a limited series. I forget how many issues, but... Yeah, it's it's like eight, four volumes worth. Twelve, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So next up we have, I get so confused looking backwards, um, going to go over another double feature that I wanted to, wanted to do real fast. This is Symbiote Spider-Man Crossroads. So this is another installment in Peter David's um, Symbiote Spider-Man saga, which I bet they didn't think it was going to have so many, you know, uh, incarnations. There was... The one, uh, I think this is maybe the third or fourth Symbiote Spider-Man series. But I really like these because it takes you back to like a classic Spider-Man time when he had that black suit after Secret Wars. And kind of exploring that time frame and, and what the suit was doing to him the whole time. Uh, well, this one uh, involves a little bit more magic than uh, we're used to. I know one of them had a bit of Doctor Strange in it. But in this one, there is a return of a character who first appeared in Journey into Mystery 107. A mm. very old character. Um, a kind of a, a sorcerer uh, that we... Uh, I, I, I don't personally remember seeing them in a very long time. If ever, I would have to I'd rack my brain to remember it. But it's really cool to see um, some definitely not used characters come back. I had to like look it up and be like, oh, whoa, that's, that's an old character. Um, but in this, there is, a like Spider-Man likes to do a lot now, maybe some dimension hopping to, uh, what seems to be maybe to Peter David's other big series he was known for, which was Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, he had a very stellar run on Incredible Hulk. He introduced a lot of new elements to the Hulk mythos in it. And it, so it looks like he's maybe um, bringing in some of that as well. So uh, when it refers to the crossroads, it's uh, kind of an interdimensional crossroads. So really cool. 
first issue of this. All of these are really good, as long as you know, hey, at one point, Spider-Man had a black suit that later became Venom. Um, you don't have to read these in any particular order. There was a King in Black, Symbiote Spider-Man. There's been quite a few, but uh, this one you can pick up no problem. There is... There is a variant for it, but I don't see it. Uh, the other thing I want to mention real quick is we have Amazing Spider-Man 71. It's very close to uh, 74, which is the last issue of Nick Spencer's run. So a lot of stuff is kind of wrapping up or kind of that like pre-wrap up. Like all the characters are getting to the same room where we're going to wrap things up. Um, this one's interesting because this is part one of um, the uh, Sinister War in Amazing Spider-Man. So it says Sinister War Part 1, but it's it's kind of the, the Amazing Spider-Man side of it. And in it, uh, if you had read Amazing Mary Jane, which is a really, really good series, um, this kind of wraps up a lot of the story elements that were in that with uh, Mary Jane and Mysterio and kind of their relationship where she, she definitely helped him um, kind of not be a villain anymore. So a lot of that kind of comes to a head in it. We also have a 1 in 25 Vincentini variant where I'm, I'm really wondering if we're going to see the end of Kindred by issue 74. We are selling this one for $25. Okay, so I read checkmate number two. We were shorted all of our A covers. So this is the variant by Matt Taylor. The A cover is the one, we showed it on Comics from the Future a few weeks ago. It says on it really big, who is Damien Rose? Remember that? Because <laughs> yep. Damien Rose was sort of an assassin sort of looking character in the background. It was hard to tell if he was assassin. He was spying. Yeah. So issue two continues on Brian Michael Bendis's story of subterfuge and secret agencies mixed with superheroes. Um, so Mark Shaw is Leviathan. He is mm -hmm. the one who, I guess Leviathan is what they call his organization, but he also is sort of Leviathan. Yeah. And Leviathan took over all the other major intelligence agencies in DC. It took them over, took all their stuff, pulled it all together. Um, that all happened in Event Leviathan. In response to that, Green Arrow has restarted the team Checkmate. And it's got characters like um, The Question, Steve, Steve Trevor, Lois Lane, Director Bones, some guy they call The King, who I'm still not clear who he is exactly, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe Talia Al Ghul, if you can trust her. She's <laughs> kind of plain double agent. Um, so... That is sort of the premise of what this is about, these two warring intelligence agencies. Now, Mark Shaw doesn't see himself as a villain. He thinks what he's doing is a good thing, trying to use all this intelligence to counterintelligence to control people. And so he really wants Lois Lane on his side because by proxy, he really wants Superman on his side. In fact, um, people accuse him of adoring Superman in this issue. So that's a very interesting thing he's dealing with. This issue is told over, it, it, goes, it cuts through time over a series of weeks, and it does it in a way that challenges the reader to keep up like a good spy novel. Mm -hmm. That is exactly, I can tell how Bendis is writing this. It's one of these, I kept having to flip back and go, oh, did I miss that? Mm -hmm. And oh, was that body there or was it not there? Um, so that's how it was. But what I will say is if you read this issue, just prepare yourself to be a bit confused, but purposely. You will be purposely confused. <laughs> I still don't get every bit of this. I really don't. But it's because there's a mystery. That, that's why. The writing is not weak. The writing's strong. But I, I, you know, I do warn people that you're going to have this feeling of, am I missing something? Now, to the whole, who is Damien Rose? There is a new character in this, but I didn't think it was Damien Rose. I don't know if that's answered in this. And I could be wrong. You know, read it for yourself. If it is, it's like, oh, that 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 is Damien Rose? Really? That's it? I don't think it is. I think that it's one of those things like they did with Detective Comics where they show something on a cover that they're going to get to 
issues later that maybe they shouldn't have like screamed it from the rooftops that way. We so. do know there is a character that was revealed in Justice League. You, you were telling me that. I still that, haven't gotten to read that issue. That has to do with that, which... Is that who it is? Is it not? It, we'll have to see. But. We'll have to talk after the show. <laughs> so, uh, so that's my review of Checkmate number two, and that is the variant cover by Matt Taylor, because I don't have the A cover. <laughs> they didn't give us any. Yeah. They're on the way, though, for if you're a subscriber with us. So I forgot to show these off before. I was looking for the Symbiote Spider-Man variant, but I forgot to show off the Amazing Spider-Man variant. So we do have the uh, Baldeon... A handbook variant, this time with the lizard. And this one, how could I forget, because this has been my favorite one so far. I con contemplated buying two. The Peach Momoko anime variant with Gwen Stacy, Ghost Spider, Spider Gwen on it. Which is just such a nice, soft cover. I mean, the face on it is so good. I love this one. But on to... Uh, now on to something completely different. We have Skybound X. This is issue number four. I believe we only have one issue left. I believe it's only five issues long. That sounds right. Yeah, because the next one has that yep. new story in it. Right. Yep. Um, this is the Charlie Adler cover, which I think is really cool that you get Adler doing uh, Negan, which looks very familiar, but him doing this like weird futuristic Rick Grimes. Uh, is really cool. So this issue, catching up on Rick Grimes 2000, um, the the hit story of the summer. Uh, like I said previously, Robert Kirkman is having so much fun with this, and you really get a strong sense of Robert Kirkman's humor and kind of his um, how would you describe it? Like his irreverence for his own characters. He doesn't hold any of his characters up like, oh, this is a great literary character. He pretty much makes fun of them in this, and I don't know if that's going to make, like, hardcore Walking Dead fans mad. Like, I like Walking Dead. I read the entire thing, but it's very funny to see things in this. Uh, it, I mean, I don't even think there's anything to spoil in this, but Negan, at one time, he, he sees a giant robot, and he's like, oh, I love giant robots. Like, I'm a big anime fan. So it's revealed that Negan is a big anime fan. There, there, yeah. uh, there's just like, there's a, something else Negan says that, I mean, and this is this is classic Negan dialogue. This is, uh, F -bombs. every other word is F, but done in, like, he, he would use it in funny ways in Walking yeah. Dead. He uses it in such outrageous ways in this that are, you just have to read it to believe it. It's so funny. You get the return of a few other Walking Dead characters. You get characters that were big characters in the show, and they are just getting, you know, blown up in the background of this. And you get that, what you see on the cover, kind of a lightsaber duel between Negan and Rick that is just so cool, so much fun. Um, so we've got one more part of this Rick Grimes 2000 story. I'll be sad to see it go because it's just kind of a uh, just a good time it's every so time it's like to who's gonna be in it what are they gonna do what craziness um this issue like all of the other skybound books has other stories in it so it has a story from the um series excellence which uh it kari randolph is the artist on that really really cool uh, we also get a redneck story by donny cates um but the other one I wanted to kind of make a note on is each of these have kind of had a uh, kind of a first taste of a new um, graphic novel or book coming out. This one has one for uh, the Sea Serpent's Air, which didn't know what to expect. Um, I saw the variant cover that had that was kind of the one for that. This is really cool. Uh, I know it's going to come out in like a volume one graphic novel. Um, it's, you know, all ages, but definitely not kiddish because it's pretty dark, very, um, Lovecraftian fantasy, I would say. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this little girl is, um, in this like kind of old rickety 
seaside house. She has a little pet, kind of a, a like a hermit crab that's kind of bigger. But um, we're introduced to like there's this like sing song voice that kind of goes throughout the panels, and you don't really know where it's coming from. Apparently, her mother has left, but is supposed to be back tomorrow. It's very a little surreal, but um, kind of rapidly takes you through these dream sequences of maybe what the sea serpents air the the uh almost feels kind of like the daughter of the ocean what she could become and is it this little girl and so you see crazy kind of lovecraftian sea monsters and maybe this girl could become like the queen of those and so she looks all crazy grown up with with barnacles all over or she is she going to go this other way and look this different way um Seems like a really cool setup for um, this story coming out, I believe in 2022. But I'm excited for it because it is a lot of fun. The art is great. Um, very, uh, I don't know, you, you have to see it. Um, you can see it on one of the variant covers. But so this is the Charlie Adler A cover. Then we have the Kari Randolph the excellence cover and then we have the uh, sea serpents air variant cover and that's like what the interior art looks like and this i mean unless i'm completely mistaken and when it comes to invincible i'm i'm not uh is it is it homage to invincible number one and they homage it a couple of times throughout invincible other books have done it but where Mark is standing up against kind of a cracked wall and you're like looking down on him. And I think that's really cool, kind of homaging another uh, Skybound book there. So. Do we have any incentives for saying all that? Yes. I Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, no problem. There's, There's so have, many books we've next got to piles me. Piles of books near that us. I'm like sorting through them. Like yeah, that's I, that's the show. Like I found the symbiote Spider-Man variant cover. Like <laughs> I thought I thought we had. And there it is. Under under stacks and stacks of things. Um, so we have the. Of course, they've been doing all these. The sketch cover. This is the one in ten. The Randolph cover. We have the uh, one in ten Tunica. It's the artist of uh, Sea Serpent's Air variant for fifteen. And then we have. I know a lot of Walking Dead fans will want this one. Uh, the one in twenty-five Charlie Adler sketch cover, which I mean, there you go. It's uh, Charlie Adler in black and white. This is this is Walking Dead yeah, right this here. Is walking Dead as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> Just need a little gray tones on it, but other than that, that is it. So, all right. So a series I have enjoyed reading month after month. We're only on issue three though. Is Shang Chi. So this is Shang Chi number three. It is the third part in the first arc called Shang Chi versus the Marvel Universe, where Shang Chi has taken over uh, what is his, the the gang his his family is a gang and he's taken over their organization and is trying to use them for good but he keeps coming up against Marvel characters <laughs> who don't really understand what he's doing with all these villains. So this issue I talked about in Comics from Future a few weeks ago. I said this might be big. I'm going to confirm this might be big. <laughs> <laughs> confirm That's right. that your confirm thought was maybe might. also right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's right. It's just you can't tell how much people are going to like jump for something. Right. So uh, in it, Shang-Chi learns that he has one more half-sibling he didn't know about. So it is her first appearance. I think her character design is strong. I think her powers are really cool. On top of that, and this was all in the solicitation, not only is it another half-sister of his, but she's a mutant. Mm -hmm. So uh, you learn, why isn't she with the family? Well, guess what? She also, like what shang Chi is doing now, she thought the family was doing wrong. So she actually is one of the few moral members of the family. And so the father ordered a hit on her, and she had to run. She had to go into hiding. Um, you'll learn a lot more about it if you read this issue, though. There's, there's more to it than that. Um, so as Shang-Chi tries to reconnect with this character, she doesn't want to hear it because she thinks the family's evil. So right away, there's a battle over that. But also Wolverine shows up. 
why is Wolverine there? He's there because they're, you know, the mutants are doing the Krakoa thing. They found out where she is, coincidentally, at the same time. She's a mutant. Wolverine's trying to protect her from Shang-Chi. There's also villagers who also overhear she's a mutant. Now the villagers want to kill her because <laughs> mutants aren't very popular in their neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of uh, different factions clashing. So what I'll say about this, as, as I said, I can confirm it is a first appearance of a new character who's not just Shang-Chi's sister, but also a new mutant. And she is not a one-and-done character. To say more would be revealing too much, but she will not just be in this issue. That's what I can say. Now, how super major will she be? How much going on? I don't know. Uh, I'm very pumped for the Shang-Chi movie. I've always liked Shang-Chi. I like uh, Kung Fu stuff in general. I think the series has been very strong. It's pretty well a done deal Shang-Chi is getting a second movie. So I think they're expanding yeah. his universe by giving him this family and these characters. So I think these are good. It's a good read, but I think this is a good hold, too. Mm -hmm. I think if you're a specker, this is one. It's inexpensive. You'll probably find it wherever. I'd grab it. I have. I've grabbed several of them. <laughs> so, But still a good read as well. And we have a variant by La Fuente. We also have a variant by Momoko. And lastly, this is a big one, we have the 1 in 50 Cho variant for 95 bucks that I bet next to no stores ordered. <laughs> awesome. Next up is, man, just hitting you with these double features, uh, but this is for Wonder Woman 776 and uh, Wonder Woman Black and Gold number 2. So, two Wonder Woman books out this week. Um, talk about this one real quick. Uh, in 776, Wonder Woman's been bouncing through all these kind of different uh, god verse -like territories. Yeah. This one, uh, the highlight of it is it's illustrated, illustrated by uh, Jill Thompson, who, uh, if you're not familiar with it, has a very beautiful um, indie painterly style. Uh, that is so nice for this. It's a very like fairy tale. You can even tell from that cover, kind of like a princess fairy tale story. But kind of, of course, with Wonder Woman, there's there's a, a dark and violent edge to it. That uh, really nice. So issue is really really cool. It has it's really awesome Becky Cloonan variant, and it seems like by the end of this one. Wonder Woman may be, may be back to Earth, but is it our Earth? Is it another version of Earth? You'll have to see. Um, also is Wonder Woman Black and Gold number two. Um, of course, this is full of a bunch of different short stories, only using the colors black, white, and gold. Um, but I wanted to show off this really, really nice Terry Dodson. This is the A cover. Yeah, so many good covers on this one. This is the Middleton cover, which is like very classic Greek art style on that one. And then, this is the big one. I think this is, I mean, this is one of the best covers in a while. This is the 1 in 25 Mac variant. David Mac variant. And this is, if you can't tell, all the gold is like holographic gold on this. It is so nice. We are selling it for $40. But, I mean, that is that is worth getting graded because it's like an art piece. Mm -hmm. Or get like a frame for it because that is so nice. All right. So, I read Detective Comics 1040. Once again, I'll remind you, if you're picking up Secret Files Huntress, you want to read that first. That is the order of Huntress, and then after Detective Comics. Otherwise, you'll hit that asterisk like I did that says, as seen in Huntress, and you'll go, oh, man, why did I not listen to Jason and the Infinity Flux people? So in this issue, Bruce Wayne turns himself in. And you may say, why? Well, remember a few issues ago in Detective 1037, he was being held for questioning when Mr. Worth hit the building with a rocket launcher, and he had to escape. <laughs> 
Well, uh, Tamaki did not forget that. She's like, you can't just disappear from jail even when it gets blown up. Yeah. So he turns himself back in. So that's a lot of what happens in this issue is what would it be like for Bruce Wayne to spend a night in the drunk tank, basically? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that just happens to be the time of day and the people that are in there. Well, he meets one drunk in there who has some very interesting drunken theories on a certain person's secret identity. (laughs) I think you'll be amused by that part. I found it very amusing. Um, Past that, Mr. Worth has teamed up with Penguin to kill both Bruce, Bruce Wayne and Batman. Which, I mean, that's interesting, but it's also very funny. There's so much like, I'm going to get Bruce Wayne, and after that, we're going for Batman. You know, mm-hmm. and as the reader, it's just like, ha, 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 you fools. <laughs> um, so, uh, lastly, who is the new villainous group called The Jury? You won't find out this issue. Kind of ends on a who is the jury climax. Yeah. But it looks like there's a new villain team that they'll be introducing next issue there is a backup story that follows um it, the, the story's about kirk langstrom mm-hmm. man bat but it's more about things that have happened to him lately and what might be his final fate so that's mm. that's the b story to this that has nothing to do with the a story we have our lee bermejo variant this is how bruce wayne felt like when he was in jail <laughs> he's like if only you knew Next up, we have, there we go, Department of Truth. This is number 11. So this is our second part in the Bigfoot story arc, uh, a story arc I think a lot of people have been really excited about. Now, if you read the last issue, you know um, Bigfoot did not show up in it. It was all about him, but he did not show up. They're just out hunting him. I will confirm that you do see a Bigfoot in this one, and it's really cool, really scary, but this one has been doing that, like, some of the pages are, like, uh, written on, like, with uh, a pen just on a piece of paper. It's, like, letter style. Uh, It's very interesting, um, these two issues, because it feels like this is just, like, a two-issue arc. Um, One of James Tynan's very creative uh, storytelling methods in this. But really cool issue. Um, just want to make you aware because if I tried to explain this one, it would just be all over the place. If you haven't been reading Department of Truth, um, and if you are, you're already really excited for this issue. There is uh, a couple of variants for it. So we have the Henderson variant. Which is an awesome Bigfoot face. Then we have the Young variant, which I love that one. I just still think he looks so much like from Planet of the Apes. Like, something about the coloring on his chest makes it look like he's wearing, like, the green jumpsuit. And he's just, like, peering around the tree. He's super intelligent looking. And then we have the 1 in 50 uh, Simmons variant. Well, first, talk about why we have the Simmons variant. We have Department of Truth, number one, six printing. Uh, is this the one they said is the Sixth final and final, and not final doing any printing? More printings of it. So, I mean, if you now you can feasibly get all of the printings of number one. You can you can there's a definite end to them. So final printing, six printing of number one, but this is the one in fifty of uh, that. Uh, six printing that is so nice. This one's going to be hard to get, I'm sure. And we are selling this for $130. So for all you completionists out there, this is going to be a key one to get, especially with uh, the lady with the X's on her eyes on the cover. Really, really cool variant. All right, from Black Caravan, I read Gods of Brutality number one. This is a four-issue miniseries. Take a look at the cover, because I think the interior art definitely resembles this very well. So, rock legend Nick Dillon has died. Or rather, he died, and now he's back with a story to tell. (laughs) So, what this is, is 
he's actually giving an interview like a rock legend would about how his band came to be the gods of brutality and he claims that he died went to hell and had to escape with the help of thor odin and a bunch of other people <laughs> and so this comic is really him telling this tale you're in it you know you you go there you see his death you see him in hell you see how he meets odin and thor and that that's sort of the ride you're in for and if you can't tell he's supposed to resemble glenn danzig you'll, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see it on the on the second cover i'll show you in a minute um, this is not PG rated at all. <laughs> it has cool splash pages of the landscape of hell and all the characters you're going to see, you know, one of those nice, like, you know, I can't believe it get, it, it gets to this point yeah. where if you see it, you're going to know, should I buckle in for the next three or is this not my thing? So that, that's generally what the book is about. Let me show the variant. So here's the one in 10 Wessler variant for 10 bucks. Wessler's also the interior artist. I mean, look at that. That's Glenn Danzig, basically. So if this is your sort of, sort of thing, you're going to like it. I mean, it does, it, de it delivers what it promises. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say about this. There's a video game from uh, years ago, uh, Brutal Legends. Brutal Legends. It I, very I much gives that. me that idea, that feeling of uh, Tim Schafer's Brutal Legend. Yeah. Okay. Wanted to mention just real fast, Action Comics number... 1033 also comes out this week um what's interesting about this one is superman's in this and coming out the same week as son of kal-el it's very interesting that we still don't know where superman goes but i'll say uh the way this series is going i get a strong hint that we are heading towards future state um superman world world of war mm -hmm. um stuff happens in this characters are in this that are from that that gives me a strong idea that uh all of this is still in line with future state storylines also uh involves aquaman a lot of atlantean stuff so really cool and there is this really nice tedesco variant you have all the different versions of Superman on there. Black suit. And uh, what else have we got? Red and blue Superman. Well, yeah, red and blue Superman, or at least blue Superman. General Superman. Kind of Superman from all, all different times and different series on that one. So, super cool cover. So, another series I've really been enjoying, like just surprisingly so much so, is <laughs> Black Cat. So, this is Black Cat number eight. This is the first part of... This story arc, what's it called? Infinity Score, part one. So Black Cat, she's a really cool character. I like old style crime stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what is her power? She's the world's greatest thief. That's her power. She's good at stealing stuff. So someone, a mysterious person, ha who I have theories as to who this is. I can't wait to see if I'm right. But a mysterious person has hired her to steal something that is very powerful, very priceless, and you would almost be insane to try to steal these things and collect these things. Mm -hmm. But she's going to try to do it anyway. <laughs> um, if any of you read the previous Black Cat issues, issue number three might have a big hint as to where this might all go. Uh, I can't say any more. It will spoil too much. So the first half of this is Black Cat doing her thing. She is breaking into this nondescript building why is it nondescript because that's a great place to hide something yeah. that is very high profile and this building has been decked out to keep thieves out so we get to see her at the top of her game all the ways that she does it how she gets through things how she gets into things how she knows things i really enjoyed that half was really just very cool to see mm -hmm. her do her work so well the second half though she goes up against nick fury so <laughs> I, and I, I am not kidding. Nick Fury comes after her with a vengeance. And they have a drag-out battle fight in the air. Uh, they try to kill each other. They have great banter. The banter between them is great. And you think the fight's going one way. Then you think, oh my god, it's going this other way. Uh, really cool battle between her and Nick Fury. And I, I'm just really excited to see where this goes. Because then, by the end, you learn what she took. You see the implications of that, and you just 
have to wonder how far are they going to let this go. I was about to say, it's a storyline that you're like, this is in Black Cat? Like, a, a character that, you know, everyone is even super familiar with, and, like, the stuff she's doing is literally, like, reality shaking. Yeah, this is some big stuff she's into, you know, so this is called Infinity Score. There's also the Infinity Destinies, Infinite mm -hmm. Destinies line that's going on, and I know for a fact, I mean, Marvel has said that, that certain things in Infinite Destinies is going to lead to a new major Marvel event involving the Infinity Stones. So that's all I'm saying. And it seems like Black Cat, there's something kind of, you know, colliding mm -hmm. with all that. So anyway, if you haven't been reading Black Cat, this is a good place to jump on. It's a really, I mean, it has nothing to do with the past stuff at all, except in issue three, they show something that might relate. <laughs> but past that, this is a perfect jump on point. And just, just a good story, too. Yeah. So, all right. So uh, we have this variant by Lupacino. Look at that. Her and Nick Fury having a, having a good old battle. <laughs> good test. And then you have the U variant, the 80th Captain America anniversary variant. And lastly, you've got this Moko variant where she is looking very slyly at you. Well, and my last thing for today is Nightwing 78. This is the third printing. No one expected Nightwing, you know, to take off the way it did. Yeah. But man, this is one of the hottest books right now. Uh, no small part to little uh, Haley down there dreaming of becoming Bitewing. <laughs> so I remember us talking about this on the on our other show, but man, this is great. Bitewing suit is great. Dreaming of being uh, Dick Grayson's sidekick. So maybe it's the first appearance of Bitewing suit. Who knows? But just a really, really great, yeah, that's great a, cover. That's a good cover. Okay, so I also read Static number two. So last issue, Static ends up going up against a school bully who also has gained powers from the incident. I think they call it the, the Big Bang, mm -hmm. where a lot of kids got their powers. This kid's powers have to do with fire. And at the end of last issue, they get in a fight in front of Static's house where his house catches fire, which is, you know, terrible. His family is around. <laughs> So this issue, Static has to decide, will he stop the villain or will he stop the fire? So we get one of those early character building moments. Mm -hmm. You know, he really sees, I have this choice and what I do is going to, you know, kind of define a little bit of what sort of hero he mm -hmm. is. Um, other things that happen in it, his parents now see what a danger he can be. They have to have a discussion and wrestle with, um, should they just raise son normal does he need to go to a specialist send him to scientists the military what um and lastly speaking of the military they are interested in these kids with powers and by the end of the issue you see that they have they have not gone unnoticed um actually there is one other thing static also is starting to get known around school with the powers. He kept it on the down low in the first mm. issue, and now people are starting to know it. And he's seeing that there's a bad side to powers where you lose your privacy. Mm -hmm. So we have a, this is the variant cover. The artist's last name is Ivy. We got these also. Oh, um, yep. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> so him. we have Usagi Ojimbo number 20. And is this the, sec the second the print. second printing? So we have our new character on here, and it's exciting because just this week they released some of the uh, character art and character concepts for the new Netflix show. Now this character wasn't on there, but I say, give it time. Give it time. This I, I feel like they there's reasons why they're expanding Usagi's universe. Yeah, this second print was probably not ordered heavily, so I would look for it in whatever store you shop. Mm -hmm. Also, just a really nice Stan Sakai cover. Mm -hmm. And the last one I'm going to talk about is Harley Quinn number five is out. So Harley narrates her own story as she is seemingly captured by Hugo Strange in Arkham, who... Um, 
they they take psychological jabs at each other. <laughs> she accuses him of being obsessed with Batman. He accuses her of being obsessed with clowns. So if you like the previous Harvey uh, Harley from this, you'll like it. Mm -hmm. If if it's not your thing, it's probably still not your thing because it is done of just a different style than yeah. the previous Harley stuff. Um, but they they're definitely leaning into that. The main thing is that this has the cameo appearance of a brand new villain. So if you're the sort you like to collect all that stuff for the fun of it or whatever, there is a brand new villain appearance at the end of this issue. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we have... Oh, that was the B cover I was showing Yeah, on. that's the B so cover. That, that, was the, the that was the Chew cover. So much to go over, and of course that was your A cover here. Same artist right here. Legends of the Dark Knight, number two, second printing. The Riley Rossmo doing the cover here. And this was the... Was this the first appearance of, of, of Quiz? Of Quiz. Mm -hmm. The new uh, Riddler adjacent character. We're still learning a lot about her, but really cool. Second printing. Another one probably not a lot of stores got in. Yep. All right, so that is our big, big show for this Ooh. week. Thank you for everyone who, who hung in there to the end. I mean, but now you know what these comics are about. Mm -hmm. You probably have a better idea of what you want to grab when you go into your store. Uh, there was a couple of revelations that happened. Like you said, some things I had no idea about. Yeah. Now I got to go grab those books. It's sometimes fun to keep a little under wraps so we can reveal yeah. it to each other on the show. We as only well. have so much time to talk before the show. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I hope all of you have enjoyed it. I hope we're doing our job of telling you about the books, not revealing every nook and cranny, so you still have fun reading mm -hmm. them, but that you know more than what the solicitations say, which is frankly not a lot no. in a lot of cases. Um, our YouTube channel, we uh, are over a thousand subscribers now, and it's starting to go up faster and faster. I think YouTube's actually pushing it out now, <laughs> and I think people are seeing the worth of this, which I'm glad because I just spent countless hours uh, not just reading this, but putting this all together, and you did too. Yeah, yeah, and also if you don't see our Friday shows, mm -hmm. Uh, comics from the future we did announce on there since we are past a thousand we've got some really exciting stuff coming up uh we are working on t-shirts we have uh we announced that we are going to be doing some new shows some with special guests yep. uh people within the comic industry uh we're in the the uh, interesting position where we know a lot of people working in the industry um we also are going to do some other really cool shows coming up some maybe some specials talking about um, story arcs or big events that we go into a little bit more depth than we do here, focusing on, you know, just a couple of issues and giving you a deep dive on those. So a lot of really cool stuff coming out now that we are over a thousand. So keep your eyes out for an even more specific announcements coming soon. Yep. And if our show has been useful to you or helped you at all, or you've just enjoyed you know, spending this time hearing about comics and our, our silly banter, please <laughs> hit subscribe. Every, every little hit helps us, and we appreciate it. But until next time, this is us signing off.